Hey girls, Jam here with another Community Army Kid Bash. And voted by you, this week I'm going to be doing a salamander. And in this case, an assault intercessor salamander. Just because when I think about salamanders, I think about big old heavy flamers, flaming swords, but most importantly, big stonking hammers. And because it's got to be a big hammer, I got this one from the Death Watch Kill Team box. So this is definitely a big old two-handed hammer right here. But you can use whatever hammer you want. And everything apart from that is going to be pretty standard, to be honest. I mean, I've got a bald head here because most of the artwork and stuff I see as salamanders, they're usually bald. So, I mean, if everybody's throwing flamers and fire around, I mean, someone's going to lose an eyebrow at some point. So you might as well shave it off, I guess. And yeah, not going to be a super complicated video. But what I am going to try and do is I'm going to try and green stuff some scales, some like, like lizardy dragon scales as like a little loincloth kind of thing down here. And I say try because I've never done it before. I don't have any special tools for it. So I'm just going to use my hobby knife and I'm going to be completely winging it. So yeah, if you want to see me possibly fail, most likely fail, then stay tuned and let's get cracking. Obviously, the first thing you got to do is clean up the model that you're using and all the bits and stuff. So I'm going to get that done. All right, one thing I should actually say, just in case you've been out of the loop, because as of right now, the salt indices haven't been released in a separate multi-part kit or anything, but... GW has announced that now, this is probably in the Space Marine Codex by now anyway, they can use Thunder Hammers, they can use Hand Flamers, Power Swords. I mean, the Salt Intercessor Sergeant can have all those, so that's what he's going to be. And to be perfectly honest, you can swap out the Lizardy Cloak I'm going to do with a Fur Cloak, and you could probably make a badass Space Wolf out of this kind of thing anyway. But yeah, I reckon the green stuff is going to be the hardest part, it's going to take the longest bit, so let's do that first, that's going to be the most interesting part of the video. So let's move all this clean up stuff out the way and get started with that. All right, so I've got my water because you're going to need that. Got my green stuff and I got my handy dandy little palette thing that I use for all my green stuff work. And yeah, let's completely wing this and see where we go. Now, we're definitely not going to need too much. I always make too much anyway, but I want to give pretty thin slice, just about like that. And what I'm going to do is because last time with my Blood angel -y rope thing i've got some hard bits so normally the hard bit comes from the middle bit there where the two pieces have been touching for a while so i'm going to snip that out and then we shouldn't have that problem hopefully then all we got to do is mush this up and of course as usual keep your hands and your fingers and your tools and everything as wet well not as wet as possible just nice and damp and yeah just mold it together okay so i got my little all the green stuff here now there should be enough i think i might have actually gone a little bit too little for once but it should be just enough so now i'm gonna roll it kind of flat well first let's get the bottom here wet so it doesn't stick squish it down a bit now you normally just use my hobby knife kind of make sure that's wet sometimes it sticks but just kind of roll it out to the length that you want i'm going to be cutting it down so it's a bit more like rugged and loose but i think like if you kind of eyeball it like that you can kind of see the length it's going to be. So, like I said, I'm going to be winging this. So I'm going to start off just leaving it on here. And I'm going to make little lines. Don't want to cut through, so just be careful about that. I don't think it has to be too uniform either. Because, I mean, it's supposed to be like scales and stuff anyway. And it has to be kind of in scale if you think about it. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see too great this camera. But yeah, I've just got lines like that. And I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. Just going the other direction, just kind of pressing into it, not cutting. Just make sure you go deep enough that you, your paint will actually be able to get in the crevices, if you know what I mean. See, now for me, I think that's too uniform, too small, too square. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of play around with it with the actual hobby knife, rough all the edges up a little bit, try and make them a bit more rounded, less uniform. And one thing I'm going to do as well, like I said, I'm going to make it... Because right now it's just like a circle. That's not going to be a natural like leathery loincloth. So what we're actually going to want to do is uh, just kind of slice some pieces off. And that will probably mess it up as well. And of course I'm going to be cutting it off straight about there so it can fit under the belt. It's looking a little bit more natural loincloth kind of vibe. But I'm still not really liking the whole uniform tiny little line. So like I said I'm going to go back in. Maybe make some deeper crevices like this in the middle, maybe. Just breaking it up a little bit. Maybe going in different directions down, so you're kind of pulling, you're kind of feathering it out in different directions. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. 
I don't know if you've ever done like fancy decorations on a cake where you make like a line through some like puree or something. <laughs> this is probably not relatable at all for you guys, but you just go in opposite directions on each line and it kind of pulls the green stuff in different ways and gives it a kind of wavy kind of different vibe to it. So that's kind of what I'm doing now, just roughing it up opposite ways on each line. Yeah, I think doing the lines in like different, going up and then going down for the next one, up or the next one, kind of pulled the thing less uniform, not as nice as I'd probably like it to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and peel it off, get it onto the body then, see what it actually looks like. So I'm sure once it's painted up, it might look okay-ish. I would say if I did this a second time, instead of being lazy, now that I'm kind of going in the vibe for how to make it look better, I'd probably do a much better job. And what I would do is I'd go from thicker lines to thinner lines, kind of like the spine of the lizard or whatever would have like the thicker nodules and stuff like that. But hey, we don't know which part of the creature this comes from. I think that would be decent enough to work there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blob of super glue around his crotch area just to kind of hold it in place. And then we can try and work that in. Like I said, if I had another go at this, I think it would probably look much better. But hey, the community army is not one chapter ever. I'm going to be doing salamanders again in the future. So we'll have a, another go at this, I guess. A little bit of super glue. Get your tweezers. Not Try not to destroy the kind of pattern you've made. Get your hobby knife. Try and get it into place. Now this is going to be a hard one to try and not ruin the pattern on it. So yeah, give that a bit of a bit of time to kind of dry there so it's held into place and then you can start kind of gently pushing it into the direction you want to go. But surprisingly, not looking too bad actually. Now, one thing I'm personally going to be doing with this because this is the Indominus Easy Build ones, they don't have, well, they normally have their pistols in their hands. And obviously I'm giving this guy a double-handed hammer, so I don't really, <laughs> i got to get a holster in this. I'm going to get the old intercessor pistol there. I'm going to cut this handle out and I'm going to stick it in there. So you still got a pistol in there. So you can kind of say it's a, a hand flamer or a plasma gun, whatever you want. So I'm going to slice this off quickly while that's getting ready to go. Should be fairly easy. All I'm going to do is slice down this way. Yeah, slice straight down here. Slowly work my way down this section here. And there you have it. Easy peasy. So if you wanted to kit bash the monopose kind of guys and you want to get a pistol holster, a pistol into the actual holster, that's a really easy way to go about it. So I'm going to just glue that in quickly because, yeah, just should be fairly simple, hopefully. And there you have that. Super simple. There's a bit of a gap down there, but I mean, it looks decent enough because I think these pistols are, are a lot bigger and chunkier than the normal intercessor ones, but it looks the part... So he's not missing a pistol in his pistol holster now. And this has been sat for about five minutes-ish. Five minutes-ish. And that should be ready to start moving it around now. Yeah, so all we want to do is kind of get the movement right. So obviously his legs up here is running. So you want it kind of coming down this way a bit. Maybe you can fold up that bit. Obviously this part here is a bit... Need to try and stretch this out a bit. Get the tweezer action going on. I think it needs to get tucked into the belt a little bit. Don't worry if you mess it up, just try and fix up the bits there. And to be honest, I don't think we need to move it much more than that. Normally with like fur, I try rough up the edges and stuff, but this is more like a leathery scale. So I think that's looking pretty decent. I mean, you could, like I said, you can fold this up, you can make it longer so it's flowing in the wind a bit more. But with what we have here, I think that's actually pretty decent. In the sack, you can try lift it up there a bit more, but I think sitting on there is stronger and it looks pretty good. Just lift these bits so they're blowing that way. That's looking pretty salamandry to me. Now with that done, I'm actually going to stick him to the base now because I don't think there's much more on the bottom area that I'm going to want to do. Okay, I've propped the brightness up on my lamp here quickly just so you guys can get a nice strong definition of the kind of scaly vibe going on there. You can see it a lot better there. And I think for a first ever attempt, and the way I did it, super, super simple. You guys can do this in like five seconds. And you got a pretty decent result, to be perfectly honest. You can get your army green stuffed up, salamandered, really, really easily now. But yeah, let's get on to the final bits, and then we'll do some accessories and get onto the showcase. Next bit, obviously, is the weapons. Now, if you're using a hammer from the actual salamander's upgrade sprue or different weapons, 
That all depends on you, really. You might be doing completely different units or whatever. Yeah, I always get the weapons on first before doing the heads, because then you can kind of get the pose right. All right, get this arm there. Perfectly honest, these arms and this weapon is for old firstborn marines. So I'm not 100% sure on the fit, but let's hope it works. All right, before those arms dry, let's quickly get the weapon in there so we can start moving things around. So let's first get into there. And there we have it. That actually fit pretty perfect, to be honest. There's not really any gaps there that I've spotted yet. The hammer and the arms and everything fit pretty perfect. I mean, there's... I mean, there might be a gap or two here and there, but it's a strong hold. The hands are linked up nicely. Yeah, pretty surprising. Well, not really. I think the old marine stuff fits pretty well with intercessors. Oh, I should say primaris. And now on to the most important part of any kit bash, like I always say, and that's the head swap. Now, of course, it, like I said, if you want to make that loincloth longer, put on the shoulder pad, do whatever you want, you know, maybe it'll stand out a bit more, but I think that's, I think that's pretty good. I'll stick a little bit of glue in here. Like I said, I'm going for the bald dude and just pop it in there. And obviously because he's running this way, got to get his head looking around here. Okay, so there's his head. If in doubt, I always try and get the head facing the same direction as the feet, if that makes sense. Because, you know, you kind of run, you, you move the way you look, if you know what I mean. So that head and that foot should be like pretty lined up there. But yeah, that's the, just generally the way I kind of try and get some decent movement. I mean, this one you could probably tilt it a bit more. But anyway, like I said, you guys are probably not doing the same model as me. But it's just little tips and things I think about when kit bashing. So all I've got to do now is put the shoulder pads on. Obviously, if you're not doing Death Watch, then you're just going to put the Salamander one here or do your transfer sheet there. But because I'm doing mine Death Watchy, I'm going to be gluing a Death Watch shoulder pad on that side. And there we have it, guys. Got my Death Watchy shoulder pad on, my salamander -y one. Got my backpack on and everything like that. Now you could pretty much leave it here if you wanted to. We've got the reptile clove, we've got the hammer, we've got an acceptable head and everything. But I want to take it up a notch. Now with salamanders, they're quite often covered in like bones and skulls and stuff like that. But I'll be looking through my bits box and I haven't really got anything that will quite fit. So I'm not sure if I'll be doing any of that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some chains onto this guy. So going from like this belt here, I'm going to have a chain going down there. And another one going down here as well, like a slightly longer one. So two chains on there, possibly some, I don't know, skulls on the backpack. I'm not really sure yet. I mean, you can even have some jaw bones hanging off the chain. But first, let's get onto the chain work. But like I said, if you're happy with this, this is all you have to do. I mean, the green stuff cloak is the main part, really. Now, if you watched my last video with doing the Black Templars, you'll probably know what I'm going to be doing here, but... Just in case you haven't watched it, all you want to do is put a dab of super glue roughly where you want it, which is round about there for me. It's probably way too much super glue there. Then you want to dangle your first kind of like link into it. And then you want to kind of let it set and dry there before you start wrapping it around and moving it and stuff like that. So it has somewhere to hold on to. So I'm going to pop this one right into the corner there if I can. Yeah, so it's not quite where I want it to be because the glue's already setting on this bad boy, but we'll hopefully make it work. Now, what you want to do is get it roughly to where you kind of think you want it. So I want to get it dangling a little bit like that. I think I'm going to cut it around about there so you've got the length that you want. Now I'm just going to put a dab of super glue down there, use my tweezers to kind of get that chain into place. Okay, way too much super glue coming out of this thing. Okay, a bit too much super glue there. It's kind of hardened my chain up before I wanted it to. I wanted it to be a bit more dangly. But now I'm going to put it same place again on top of the same link. But I'm going to do a slightly longer one. So let's get a hopefully a tiny drop of super glue onto this. All right, so we got our chain roughly kind of where we wanted it. Didn't turn out as nicely as I planned. Too much super glue going everywhere and whatever. And by the way, it's a 1.5 millimeter by 2 millimeter chain, I believe it is. But like I said, if you watch my kid bashing blade guard veteran guy, you'll see that anyway. Just wanted to add a bit of extra spice to the model. And maybe once it's painted up, it'll look a little bit better. I do feel like it needs something around the back area, maybe some bones or whatever. But you know what? A good old purity seal here or there kind of always does a trick for me. Now to make sure your chain stays in place and it doesn't dangle around, normally you want to get a toothpick or something, but I'm going to use the end of my tweezers here, dip it into your super glue, get a little bit on there, and just dab it onto the chain in between the links and stuff like that, and it will kind of set it in place. Just make sure you have it where you 
you want it before it sets. So I want this one dangling as far down as possible because he's obviously running around. Once it sets, that should be nice and rock solid there. It's not going to go anywhere and you've got some pretty badass emo chains hanging off your salamander. Like I said, now if you want to hang off some bones or something like that, I'm going to play around with that. If I can't come to anything I quite like, then I'm just going to cut straight to the showcase for you guys. Alrighty guys, so there we have it. Onto the showcase and I am done. I couldn't really find anything else I wanted to add to the model. I tried to put some like orc skulls on the backpack, all that kind of stuff. And I just didn't, I felt like the model is quite busy already and I didn't want more. I think maybe slapping on like one or two human sized skulls onto the backpack might still work. But I didn't really feel that was quite salamandery at all. I mean considering they're supposed to be one of the kind and like nicer <laughs> space marine chapters. I don't think they would have human severed heads around their body. They usually have some sort of dragony beast skulls on them. And of course if you've got the Primaris Salamander's upgrade spree, you kind of got that flamey backpack thing you could add on there as well if you want the extra spice. But I'll be doing more Salamander kit bashes in the future so I'm going to be holding off on anything too fancy for that. But what I did add was, because mine's Death Watch mainly, I added little like grenade pouches to his chest, kind of bulks him out a little bit more as well. Fills that gap. And because the pistol holsters on these guys are absolutely massive. Added another kind of like pouch and grenade on top of that. So making a little bit more tactical. A bit more kill team vibe. But yeah, that's the video. So comment below if you guys kind of dig this dude. Maybe you can think of a nice salamandery name for him. And I'm hopefully I'll get around to painting him relatively soon. I've got some plans to kind of maybe do like a flaming molten hammer. Maybe paint some flames onto his like legs and stuff like that. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. And if you happen to watch my content quite often, then I actually do have a Patreon and a merch store that recently opened up. It really helps keep my bits box full and all that stuff. So I'd really appreciate any sort of support. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then maybe subscribe and check it out because I release hobby content like this every single week. And talking about that, I'll have the next poll up. So you guys can vote on my next kit bash coming up pretty soon, probably just after this video. But until then guys, see you in the next one. Bye bye.